Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending December 19th. First up, this article is from, let me get on the right page here, sciencealert.com and I also have another one from wired.co.uk. This is about the Terra Fugia flying car and I've, I've done this at least one or two times in the past if not even more than that. It's the flying winged car that has just a really small kind of gull wings off the side and the uh, electric pods that help to get it into the air. They're talking about that, uh, when, well, I'll just read the first part of, about it here where it talks about it uh, from the wire.co.uk. Um, Humans may have conquered the art of space flight and developed levitating trains, but flying cars are one of the modes of transportation that seem forever just beyond our grasp. That doesn't stop many, including the likes of American flying car company Terrafugia, from trying, though Terrafugia has just released a new exterior design for its Healy car hybrid the TFX, a vehicle that has been doing the rounds since 2013, but has yet to get off the ground. Doesn't look to me a whole lot different than the original picture. They've got a, a video off to the side that you can um, play. Uh, what they're actually going to do is they're going to test, I think, a one-tenth scale model just to see how practical that is sometime in 2016. But some of the things that kind of concern me about this is the fact of... Uh, the power to weight ratio too and it doesn't look like even if the car itself is a lifting body with the lifting body and the wingspan that we're talking about which is very small here you're going to be basically to my mind you're going to be using a thrust to force it into the air and they're talking about the fact with the uh, twin electric motor pods just to get it up in the air going to take a megawatt of power it's a hybrid with a 300 horsepower regular engine and then some uh, batteries per, uh, providing juice to the electric motors but Still, to, to generate a megawatt of power, that's the equivalent to over 1,300 horsepower. So even if the uh, electric motor was twice the horsepower of the 300 horsepower engine, you're still going to be starved for power. Now, they're saying that this thing is still in uh, development. It's going to take 8 to 12 years to come about. But, yeah, they're going to have to have some real breakthroughs on uh, power-to-weight ratios on uh, electric motors and the engines to, to get this possibly done. But I'll put the two links up so you can read about it and... Uh, see if this could possibly happen. I mean, it it is cool looking for what it is, so if it does come come a full blast into uh, something that we could actually use, it would be great. And this is from IFL Science, according to DARPA. This is what the world will look like in 2045. Um, this is a talk by an astro a former astronaut, Pam Melroy, where she talks about the uh, visions and what DARPA thinks the future is going to look like in uh, like 2045. Uh, a little bit ahead, well, even 20, in 2030. And basically what she's talking about is battlefields will actually be probably manned uh, at least a, a large percentage of them, if not half of them, by robots. And uh, they'll have robots on the battlefield fighting each other, helping to support the fighting troops, uh, keeping an eye on the fighting troops and seeing how they're uh, getting along and, you know, if they're getting too tired or stuff like that. So um, it's pretty interesting. There's two different videos here that you can play about it, but... Uh, yeah, I like to read about the predictions. It seems like uh, less than half of them ever do take place exactly like people are saying they are. But if you want to see a little bit about what uh, the future could possibly be like, uh, for example, it says uh, militarized drones are becoming increasingly spooky with one DARPA project aimed to create vampire drones, those that sublimate into nothingness in direct sunlight, leaving no trace of their exploits. Um, it will allow us to work as partners with machines and have them understand our intent for much more complex tasks instead of having rudimentary voice recognition and keyboards, machines, drones, aircraft, even spacecraft will respond to our commands dynamically and control multiple systems simultaneously. In other words, they will even anticipate stuff, I guess, based on uh, body language and whatever information they get from, uh, from us. So anyway, that's kind of cool. And that was from, um, this, this article was from Steve A., uh, thank you for sending that in, Steve. And then uh, this is an interesting one. This is uh, LifeLock. I don't know if you know about LifeLock and the guy Todd Davis that put his Social Security number up for LifeLock and uh, actually got he got his uh, accounts hacked 13 different times by doing that, saying how great LifeLock is. Well, uh, they're be being, uh, they got sued by the Federal Trade Commission and they had to come up with $100 million for playing fast and loose with customers' sensitive information. And it's the largest payout the FTC has ever won. The customers themselves will get $68 million of that and the remainder will be provided to the FTC for use in further customer redress. So 
Yeah, I, I always thought that LifeLock was kind of a scam thing anyway, how they could just totally protect you on the Internet. And as a matter of fact, the first um, lawsuit they had in 2010 was worth $12 million because he claimed that he could stop fraud when, when all they did was they just put fraud alerts on your account is all they did. They didn't have any way to really just stop fraud or anything like that. So that was just a bunch of nonsense. But if you get a chance, to check that out. And last up, this is from Hot Hardware. Sony developing sulfur smartphone batteries with 40% higher energy density. Um, kind of unusual because Sony is only about 8% of the battery uh, development force out there. There's other ones like Samsung, Panasonic, and LG Chem that are really controlling the market with 20% or better shares. But if Sony can come up with it and with a sulfur electrode, which they claim that can take recharging and be able to handle it over and over again, give you uh, way more power where you could either... Um, have the same size batteries with 40% more power, or you could make the batteries quite a bit smaller and still have uh, the same power as the old batteries. So, uh, yeah, so Sony's batteries use sulfur compound instead of lithium compounds for the positive electrodes, allowing for much greater energy density. If more complicated batteries for even smaller devices is the ultimate goal for OEMs, we're looking at you, Apple. Sony sulfur batteries can be made 30% smaller than traditional lithium ion cells while maintaining the same runtime. So, Hopefully this will be a cool deal, and uh, maybe Sony will come up with a breakthrough. Sulfur is not a real dangerous chemical to deal with, so it would also make the batteries a little bit easier to uh, probably dispose of or recycle, whatever like that. So anyway, that's about it for this week. I'm going to take a break next week because that's going to be the Christmas week, and uh, I'm going to spend some time with family and have fun, and I hope everybody has a happy holiday, whatever way you celebrate it, and I will catch you in two weeks.